In this video, I'm gonna show you three things that you can never do with driver if you wanna hit it long and straight. I'm gonna start with something which is really, really simple to do, but I see so many golfers getting it wrong. The first thing that you can never do if you wanna hit driver well is manipulate the club face. And I'm not talking about back single, down single, I'm just talking about setup. If I just set the club head behind the golf ball, if I have the club shaft nice and vertical, the way that this club is designed, the way that most clubs are designed, that club face will sit perfectly square. That's what I want. But look what happens if I push the handle or push the club shaft forward, the club face opens. If I do the opposite, if I bring the club shaft backwards, the club face closes. So if I don't have this perfectly vertical club shaft, if it's forward or back, that will change where the golf club points. Now, why is that an issue? Well, that's an issue because if I do that, and I have the handle sort of forwards and opens the club, I'm then gonna have to kind of look at that and then probably twist it to point back at my target. Now I've got the club shaft forward, but the club face is twisted. If I bring my hands back to the middle, it's closed. And this happened in a fairly recent lesson of mine where at setup, this golfer just explained to me that they just didn't feel comfortable with the driver. Even before they took the club away, didn't feel quite right, they didn't feel set. And we kind of figured out that this is the reason why. This golfer had too much shaft lean at setup, which as we said, would open the face. They then had to twist the club face. And as they were kind of waggling this way, the club face suddenly looked closed and it just felt really, really uncomfortable. So if you're ever kind of over the golf ball and the club face just doesn't look right, or you don't feel comfortable, there's a very good chance it could be due to this. How do you fix it? Well, just build a routine. So what I would love you to do is pick your sort of, you know, target that you're going for, work out your intermediate target on the ground and actually start by just, with your trail hand, just setting the club in behind the golf ball. I can now get the club shaft nice and vertical. I can make sure that the club is sitting on the ground with the face at 90 degrees to my target line. That now looks good to me. I can then place my hands on and now I can build my stance around that. So now I can have that club shaft nice and neutral with a club face which is nice and neutral, and as I'm about to swing, I feel better about my golf swing. That's so important. Confidence is massive with driver. If you start your golf swing from a position of, this doesn't feel right, I don't feel great over the golf ball, very often the result will reflect that. So don't manipulate the face, let it sit nice and square and build your stance around it. Driver, always gonna give you issues, always gonna be a difficult club to get on with, be consistent with, if your back swing is too upright. Now, I'm not really talking about the driver here or the shaft angle, I'm actually talking about where your hands are and the path that your hands take. Let me explain what I mean. So I've given quite a few golf lessons recently, specifically with the driver, and this is cropping up a lot. And it's giving golfers a lot of issues. And when I change this, the results, they're almost instant. So I'd love you to go ahead and check this in your golf swing. Once I take a setup to this golf ball, I obviously stand in a certain place relative to the ball. The club is a certain length and that setup and that club length kind of indicate to me or dictate where I need to move my hands. You might know that as kind of plain. And what I'm seeing a lot at the moment is golfers where their hands are going too vertically up in the backswing. It would look like this. If I contrast that to something that would look pretty good, where we get more sort of depth, where the hands have moved a little bit more above my heels. Now, why is that an issue? Well, it's an issue because it means that the overall swing shape is gonna to be too steep for the setup and the club that you've got in your hands. And that's really difficult to manage. And very often, from this backswing where the hands go too much up, as soon as the golfer starts their downswing and they add in rotation back towards the target, that drags everything even further out and they end up in a position on the way down where they really just can't recover from that. And the result is, as you can imagine, kind of pulls and slices and then downward strikes and body jumping up and really difficult to manage. So let's think about two really important aspects of the backswing. Your arms play a really important role in the backswing and you also have some body turn. Now let me explain kind of those two movements together. If I took a setup, if I simply just did this with my hands and my arms, what would you think my backswing looked like? you would think it looked pretty strange, okay, both from the face on and from that down the line. That does not look like a particularly good top of the back swing position. However, when I'm doing this, my arms are actually working exactly as I need them to work. The reason that looks very strange is because I haven't added 
the body turn. And as soon as I add the body turn, look what happens. I get into a really nice position. So your backswing is made up of essentially this movement of your arms and some body turn. Now, when you don't have enough body turn, all that really happens is you get the arms lifting the club up. Even if I add just a little bit of body turn, I still don't get the club into the right position. So for those golfers that I was kind of helping, a lot of it was body turn. It was that they weren't really rotating enough in their backswing. And for the majority of golfers, you might be in this category, you're not as flexible as you used to be, I'm certainly in that category. If I want to make a pretty full turn, which is going to allow me to get into really good top of the backswing position, I've got to allow my legs to move more. And a lot of the golfers I've been helping recently needed a little bit more leg rotation to enable them to get that club into that position that we wanted. So here's a really key little checkpoint that I want you to have. It will depend on where you look at the golfing from, but have a look at my knees, okay? Probably that left knee is hidden by that right knee. What I would love you to do at the top of your backswing is be able to see some daylight between those legs, as you can see there. That means I've turned my hips a good amount. My trail leg has lost some of its flex. My lead leg has increased in its flex. That's created this gap in here. That turn through my hips is going to allow me to get my hands into a really, really good place at the top. Without that rotation, there's two things, well, three things could happen. Number one, you end up having a short golfing. Number two, you end up having a vertical upright golfing. Or number three, you try and get the club into the right position by pulling the arms behind your body, and that really gets this right elbow out of position. So if you're not turning well enough, there's not really that many good things that can happen. I'd love you to try and turn more, get some more depth, because that will help you with your downswing, okay? The last little thing I want you to just focus on here is as you're doing that, very simply try and get the grip of the club behind your heels. So, daylight between the knees, grip behind the heels. If I can do that, I'm gonna be primed and in a really good position to start the downswing. And the third thing that I don't think you can really do if you wanna hit the driver well, is have your upper body tilted towards the target in the downswing. This is a big, big no-no. I see it a lot. It's body shape, it influences the golf swing, it influences how the club attacks the golf ball. We're gonna to come to why that's there in a moment and it's gonna create low shots, spinny shots, fades, slices, all those horrible things that we're trying to avoid. We've got to appreciate that in a golf swing, where you position your body will dramatically influence where the golf club is in your swing. We want the golf club to approach the golf ball with a pretty neutral path that helps us hit straighter shots. And if that club is working upwards away from the ground, that helps you maximize your distance. How do we do that? Well, your upper body, so we'll use zip and belt buckle as our reference, has to be tilted away from the target at impact and through delivery. So I want you to think about my left hip and my left shoulder. And as I approach this golf ball, notice how my lead hip is closer to the target than my lead shoulder. What that does is it puts this tilt through my body. You can see that alignment stick is, with any look, fairly close to that angle. What you might find, and I'd love you to video your golfing and kind of look at it from the face on, it's really common to see a golfer get to the top and start the downswing with the upper body moving forwards in this sort of fashion here. Now, when we look from this down the line, you can see how that moves the club and the hands too much on the outside. But when we look from the face on, which is closer to the target, my shoulder or my hip, it's my shoulder. So what that's done is just put my upper body tilted towards the target. And you won't see any good drivers of the golf in that position. You could potentially get away with that if you've got loft. And I don't mean loft on the driver, I mean loft as in 8-iron, 9-iron nine, nine wedge, because you can sort of go with that and hit down. With the driver, it's going to produce those really difficult approach angles where you feel like you've got to sort of back up out the way of it. So the last thing I want you to do with your driver is have your lead shoulder leading your hip in the downswing. You can see I put this alignment stick in the ground. What's that angle? Maybe some 10 degrees, maybe 15. And what I'd love you to do as you're hitting drives is just think about your belt buckle and think about your sternum, so the zip or the buttons on your top. And as I get to the top of my goal sink, I'm very simply gonna try and get my belt buckle to push out closer to the target than my buttons or my sternum. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give my upper body this angle where I feel like I'm matched to the alignment stick. That's why I've got that there as a kind of visual reference, as a bit of a concept. And what that will do is that will massively influence the golf club in the correct way. Because look what happens as I add that sort of lateral shift, 
it adds an element of downward in my hands. Downward is great because it gives you that inside delivery. And if the club is working downward towards the ground, it gives you a greater chance of hitting up on the golf ball. So I'd love you to just go ahead and rehearse these dancing moves and feel how that might be different to what your tendency is where the shoulders start, they lunge towards the target and that influences the club and influences that attack angle. So you can go ahead and hit shots this way. I'd love you to go ahead and just do those little rehearsals, put the alignment stick in there, go ahead and hit it. And if you can fix or eliminate those three movements from your golf game, your drives will be longer and straighter.